835 on WGHT. We're live and local, and we're honored this morning to be joined by one of the greatest members of one of the greatest groups. And you can hear it right now. Fifth Dimension, Marilyn McCoo. Joining us, Fifth Dimension, Lamont McAlemore. Good morning, Lamont. Hey, good morning back to you. How are you today? Right back at you. Hey, where are you right now? Yeah, I'm in uh, Pennsylvania right now on my way to New York because we have a book signing. My, uh, my autobiography is this coming Saturday, 6 to 8 p.m. at the Sugar Bar in New York. Yeah, an evening with Lamont McAlemore of the Fifth Dimension at the Sugar Bar at 254 West 72nd Street in New York, and that's Saturday, June 13th. You'll be there from 6 until 8 o'clock, and then you'll have an on-stage chat and a book signing. And the book is phenomenal. The book is unbelievable. Man, we had a fun time writing it. Mr. Robert Arnold, who co-wrote the book, he is phenomenal, man. And, and hey, I don't think I could have gotten anybody else to write it better than he did. He's a, a, a fifth dimension biographer, and he knew more about the fifth dimension than, than the group does. So we're looking really forward to it. The book, I'm very happy with it. From the Hobo Flats to the fifth dimension, it's a great look inside into the life of Lamont McLemore from birth from your youth, life with your parents, who, by the way, according to the book, worked real hard. They were trapped in, in an area where you, you, you don't have opportunity and you don't make a lot of money. And you are the poster child for someone who has ambition to get ahead. And you formed the fifth dimension. How did you meet Marilyn? I was a photographer first. I was the first uh, black ph photographer on the West Coast for Harper's Bazaar, and then I worked for Motown. I shot Stevie Wonder's first album cover, I shot the Supreme, Temptation, so I met everybody, and then Marilyn McCoo was in a beauty pageant, and I was covering it for a magazine, and she won the talent part. And next year, I was covering the same beauty pageant, and Florence LaRue won the talent part, so I asked her if they wanted to join a group with Ron Townsend and, and Billy Davis, who were from St. Louis, and we all went to school together, and, and we got together and started harmonizing, and the rest is history. People do not know your side of life about your photography and your history with Jet Magazine. I shot for Jet Magazine, the center folds for 50 years, man. Yeah, you've seen them come and go. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's right, and that go in people's homes and all the Jet uh, Centerfolds are all over the wall. All the military people used to call me and say, man, uh, that was the highlight of their, you know, when they were in the service, man. They always went to the Centerfold. And so more people knew me from Jet than they did the Fifth Dimension. Absolutely. The Fifth Dimension, though, iconic group. Your list of hit records, unbelievable. Your time spent in the studio versus your time appearing live. What did you enjoy more, building a record in the studio or the live appearances? Actually, I like the live appearances better because you actually got a chance to see people's faces and them really enjoying, you know, the, uh, the fruits of your efforts. So, and I don't care how tired you would you would be, people would say you sing the songs over and over again. I don't care how tired when we hit the stage and saw those smiling faces, man. It's like. Oh, you've never, never done it before. Lamont, you have a really, really good, sharp sense of humor. But when you were in the fifth dimension, or your time spent with the fifth dimension, you seemed more like the quiet background guy. You delivered this type of music called Champagne Soul, and you're the bass singer. It seems to me you were maybe the guy that held it all together behind the scenes, and you had the contacts. Is that me bragging for you too much, or is that any way true? Well, a lot of it is, is true, man. I was, I was probably the least of the singers, because all right. of us that were fabulous singers, so I had to hold up my end and, and learn all my parts the hardest. I had guys teaching me at night, so I would go to uh, the rehearsal with my parts learned, you know, so, and to them it was rel relatively easy. Me, it was very, very hard, but hey, I enjoyed it, and uh, when it comes to jokes, man, my grandmother always taught me, she said, if you ever want to see heaven, make somebody smile. I used to write all the crazy stuff for the group, you know, all the jokes and everything. So to this day, half the time when I call people or they call me, it's, well, you're not going to hang up till you tell me a joke. <laughs> so, 
So anyway, I, I enjoy life, man. And people ask me, well, what makes you think? I say, all I have to do is just wake up on this side of the dirt. Yeah, when you wake up on this side of the grass, it's a good day. I'm going to say a quote from your book and tell me what emotion comes from your mind first off the top of your head. Everyone loves Mama June. What comes to your mind? Just that. Everyone loves Mama June. We, I just came from St. Louis, Missouri, where she is 101 years old. Okay. A memory. She don't forget nothing. Now, Lamont's going to be at the Sugar Bar, 254 West 72nd Street, this Saturday from 6 until 8 o'clock. Now, it may be very, very crowded. You could call ahead and make a reservation because this is one gentleman that if you don't get to shake hands with and meet, you may regret. He is an actual icon and a legend of the music business. The phone number is 212-579-0222. I have so many papers in front of me that it's hard for me to keep track of what's coming up in your future. I could, I could tell you that your PBS appearance was fabulous. You're an extremely handsome guy, even at your age. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Uh, laugh, laugh, laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Did you play professional baseball? Yeah, I played professional ball. When I was in the, in the Navy, I was in special services, and I uh, played baseball. The Dodgers, we played against their farm team, and they saw me, and I got signed. And I went out celebrating and fell out of a car and broke my arm, so that kind of ruined their career. I stayed in it for a long time. But I you were signed by the pitches. Dodgers. You were signed by the yeah. Dodgers. Yeah, Dodgers farm system, right. Was that in the early 60s? That was in the late 50s. Unbelievable. What position did you play? I was a pitcher until I broke my arm, and then I switched to first base. So as a, as a uh, pitcher, you never really learn how to hit, but I learned how to butt. And they were, the scouts were coming back to see me because so I was butting and with a 300 average. <laughs> <laughs> they knew I was going to bunt, but they couldn't catch me. <laughs> That's amazing. The Mets could have used you last night because they, San Francisco they pitched shut, yeah. not only shut out, a no-hitter. No-hitter, man. That's, and that's phenomenal with these hitters in the league today. So, Are you still a Dodger fan? Yes, I'm a Dodger fan, and I've still played soft, I play 150 games of softball a year with the senior league in, in Las Vegas. And, man, some of those old guys, one guy 82 years old, would throw you out from center field on a fly. So he's my inspiration. So, but I love baseball, so I'll probably be pay, playing until I'm 100. So, yeah. From the Hobo Flats to the Fifth Dimension, I went on Amazon, nothing but five stars from everybody who's reading the book. That was kind of phenomenal, man. Every, all of them were five-star reviews. So I hope people really like it when they get the book. It's not only a biography. I mean, it's an inspiration. My grandmother was a Cherokee Indian, never finished the third grade, but she gave me all these philosophies about life, and I lived my life by it, and then they were all, you know, successful. So I invite everybody to read the book and, and, and just enjoy the philosophies. Yeah, the book's great not only for baby boomers, but Generation X and Y, because you really are a blueprint for a successful life. I told Mr. Arnold, I said, the book could have been entitled, If I Could Do It, Anybody Could, because I really came from very impoverished uh, situation and, and it all worked out. My grandmother, one time I used to read all these travel magazines and all, I said, Grandma, I sure wish I could go around the world like this, but I know I'll never be able to. She said, you know something, stand up. So I stood up, she said, now take a step. I said, I did. She said, now you want to step closer. And I never stopped stepping. Lamont, you're the kind of person that doesn't talk bad about anybody. Can you give us a little insight about what it was like being on the Ed Sullivan Show? One of the highlights of our career, you know, with the being on there and, and, and mentioned in the same tone of the, of, of the, as the Beatles and all. And right. Ed Sullivan, he loved the group, so that was one of our favorite programs. Are you still in touch with Billy Davis and Marilyn? You see them? Well, when our first our book was first released, I timed it so it would be at they were doing the show at the Orleans in, in uh, Las Vegas. And so we timed it so it would be at this show. And they came to my autograph signing and called me on stage that night. And I was so nervous, I wasn't sure I was going to remember the words. But <laughs> it was just fabulous. No, we are very, very close. Hey, listen, out of all the songs that were hit records by The Fifth Dimension, what song do you remember that no. wasn't a hit that you liked the best? Uh, probably Ashes to Ashes, Dust to Dust. There's a lot of them, but Black Patch. And, uh, 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 we had a lot of turntable hits. I mean, they were really hits on the air, but uh, people couldn't really dance to them, so they weren't that syllable, you know. But otherwise, 
I, I loved every song we did almost. Yeah. Lamont McLemore from the Fifth Dimension, bass singer, one of the handsomest guys in music business. He's going to be peering at the Sugar Bar, 254 Wets, 72nd Street, New York, New York, this Saturday, June 13th, from 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock, signing his book from the Hobo Flats to the Fifth Dimension, and then there'll be a question and answer and a, and a handshaking and maybe a couple of photo ops. This is something you want to get in on. 212 to make reservations. What's in the, the future for you for the rest of this year? I know managers plan ahead and you must know some things and some places you're going to be or some things that you're going to do. People ask me, what do you do during your uh, retirement? I don't really call it a retirement. I'm just, just tired. <laughs> but uh, from Monday through Friday, I don't do anything. And then on Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, I rest. You know you're getting old when, the, when your back goes out more than you do. You see, that's you. It, 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 that's right. <laughs> I bend over to tie up my shoes, and I said, what else can I do while I'm down here? <laughs> yeah, you know you're getting old when you brag about your lawnmower. That's, a, that's how they know when you're getting old. <laughs> and somebody else said, you know, you're really getting old when you look at your telephone book and all the numbers in an MD. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're getting old when you help an old lady across the street, and you realize it's your wife. So you know, yeah, that, that, that's it. <laughs> all right, Lamont. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to check you out at the Sugar Bar, and I'm almost done with your book. You, uh, the book is available, and you can get it overnight from Amazon. Uh, five stars across the board. From the Hobo Flats to the Fifth Dimension, American Icon, a man who came from nothing and is one of the biggest stars in the world. Uh, well, you're one of my idols, man, and I will always listen to Jimmy Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. You, then I'll, I'll say, you're the one. You're the one listening. Okay. Lamont, have a great day. We're going to go out with one of your biggies. See you uh, Saturday. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Hope to see you. Thanks for being on WGHT. Okay, thanks, man. Thanks, thanks.